We're almost in the new year and a lot of people are like, okay, groceries are getting more expensive, rent is going up, I need a side hustle. I have the perfect side hustle for you. If you are creative minded, even if you're not creative minded, I think you can do this pretty well. And this is freelance photography. I have been a freelance photographer coming up on three years in 2023, and I wanna give you my tips on how you can start to become a freelance photographer. So today I'm gonna to break down the steps I took when I first started freelance photography, the camera I started with, what I've upgraded to, why I didn't start with the best camera, how I actually got clients when I was first starting, and how I continue to get clients to this day, to the point where I'm almost fully booked and steps to grow and move forward if you wanna make this your full-time business. I personally believe you can be making anywhere from $500 to $2,000 to $5,000 extra a month by simply just working on the weekends, depending on how fast you progress in this business model. So, step number one is going to be to buy a camera. I recommend getting a Rebel Series camera from Canon. That is what I started with and I adore that camera. It got me very far from my first family session that was free to my first wedding that I ever did. Now, I don't recommend it as a wedding photography camera, but I definitely rec recommend it as a beginner camera. Not only does it have photography functions, it also has video functions. So you can start diving into the video world if that's something you could see yourself freelancing with. When I got it, I bought a kit for around $600 to $700 on Amazon, I'll link it here, and it had everything I needed to start. It had two lenses, it had SD cards, batteries, a camera bag, a camera strap, everything I needed. I didn't even need to go out and buy a bunch of things from a different bunch of different places. I bought this box, it came in Amazon, like, you know, two days later, and had everything I needed. This also helped me out because I didn't need to find, okay, what brand SD cards work with this camera? and what lenses should I get? It was just a good starter pack. It had everything. I then upgraded to the 80D and now I am shooting on the Canon R6 here, but I do not recommend buying the nicest and newest camera because as you've probably heard if you're interested in photography, it's not the camera, it is the person. How do you actually build your portfolio and start getting clients and start actually performing photo shoots? What I did is I offered free or highly discounted photo shoots around $25 to $50 a session to friends and family that I knew, or I would practice on them. And then I also would join a ton of Facebook groups and be like, hey, I'm offering free foot photography sessions. And I was honest with them. I would be like, I'm just starting out. I just got a camera. I want to dive into it. So fair warning, I don't really know too much about it. So this, you will be a practice model, you know, break it down, be honest with them so they know what they're expecting. So building off of that, join as many Facebook groups in your area as you can, even the counties or cities or towns outside of your area. I say this because a lot of them will not allow advertising, but a lot of them will have people, moms, new moms, other photographers looking for a photographer, looking for someone to refer to, looking for a family portrait photographer. Sometimes you'll get college seniors looking for college graduate photographers senior photos for high school seniors. They'll be like, hey, in search of a photographer. Sometimes they'll say their budget. Sometimes they'll say the style they're looking for. What I recommend is going in those comments and leaving your name. But what do you leave? You can't just leave your name. Build a portfolio. So those free sessions and fit working, practicing with family and friends, put that into a portfolio. Now, I have a website. I'll link it below if you want to check out my photography portfolio website, but I have a website and I highly recommend a website, but that does have a cost associated with it. It's a couple hundred dollars a year. If you don't want to pay that right now up front, I recommend using a social media platform such as Instagram, Facebook pages, or Pinterest to show off all kinds of work that you can send to people or comment on a Facebook post with. Or what you can do is go on Canva and it's like a design software. If you guys don't know what that is, look it up on Google. It's very easy to use, very user friendly compared to Adobe Photoshop, for example. But you can make a website, which is basically a file or presentation, but it gives you a URL link to comment on social media and share with friends. So what you could do is you could put all your work on this file, talk about the photo shoot, things like that. This is another example of how you could comment on someone's post. So in all, I recommend having some sort of portfolio and commenting on the post. Now, how do you comment? What do you say to actually get the deal? This is what I say. Hey, I would love to help. Here's my portfolio. And I click paste. There goes my website link. And then what I'll do is I'll say, I'm gonna message you. I click on the name of the post, go and privately message them. Hey, here's my portfolio. Sometimes I throw in a price what I would offer. And I'm like, I would love to help you out. Go 
back to the post and I say, just messaged you, check your request. That's a thing that not many people do. You wanna say check your request because sometimes, and a lot of times actually, our private messages to random people go to their message request and they'll never check because it's in a completely separate folder. So always say check your request. A lot of times I see a good turnout from this, they'll message me and be like, I love your work, let's book a session, what do we do? How do we start, whatever. And from there, you'll learn. If you have questions about that, leave it in the comment section below and I'll make a video on what to actually say in the booking process of booking a photography client. And from here, I recommend always be learning and always make connections. Meet up with other photographers, learn from them. Ask to shadow those photographers and learn from them. Meet up with them in a coffee shop. Meet up with anyone you know because you never know when someone will want a photographer. There's been so many times where I meet up with people just to like hang out and they're like, so what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm a photography, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, my mom needs headshots done, or my cousin needs a wedding photographer. Always be making these connections. The more you get your name out there, the more referrals and clients you may have a chance of getting. On top of learning, always be watching YouTube videos, always be practicing on friends and family because you can always be learning more. I've been doing it for three years and I've learned so much recently about photography that I never even knew. The last thing I wanna mention is an LLC or taxes or whatever. You do not need an LLC to start, especially because you will not be making any money at first, and if you are, it will not be much. If you're charging $25 a session, it will take you a while to get to $600 that the tax rule is. So start it out, try photography, offer free, offer discounted, because you never know if you'll actually want to do it. If you do five photo shoots and you hardly make any money, and you're like, I hate this, I don't want to do it, you don't have to worry about that business license. You don't have to worry about that business bank account you started. Put it on hold, and once you decide if you really like it and wanna go forward, then get the LLC, then get the business bank account. But I highly recommend pausing because I made the mistake with a different business idea of making the LLC and making the business bank account, and now I don't do it. So now I just owe money and I'm wasting money in the process, but I did try it out. I'm happy I tried it out, but please put that on pause before diving full head first. I hope this helps you become a freelance photographer. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below. Check out my website and let me know if you need any photos done and subscribe to this channel for more business and life advice.